to hammer the delusion we move to ignorance to wisdom because delusion is caused by the ignorance today's topic before changing anything outside we should change our mind that is what this master says one master says yatha chittam tatha vacho yatha vachas tatha kriya as the mind so is the speech as is the speech so is the action you know all these verses were written almost thousands of years ago as is the mind so is the speech as is the speech so is the action if i maintain awareness of the thought speech and action i can understand where lies the delusion and i can i can pick up i can understand those seven factors and i can take the remedial measures internally everything is happening internally <coughs> But if I bring first the outer changes and I want to reflect that it reflects my inner state, it is a kind of hypocrisy. We should always be aware of this fact. And that is why our masters have offered hundreds of rituals to get rid of it as a reminder to the mind. I'll be talking about it. So another master also talks about this kind of a, he specifically says the foolishness. You, you already remember the seven factors. I believe so. Why shouldn't I believe? You all know the seven factors. <coughs> so you all know the seven factors. Brandy wrote me in a test, seven plus five plus two. So she knows it. Yeah. She is here. So, one master says there are five signs of foolishness. Foolishness is the first uh, of the seven factors. So, he says, Murkhasya Pancha Chindhani. There are five pointers for the foolishness. The first is the vanity, hollowness, vanity. Did I talk with the hollowness? Does not make any sense? Or I think of the hollowness second is the wicked conversation this is how the master explains third is the hesitation constant there is a sense of hesitation lives in the mind <coughs> fourth is the stubbornness and the fifth is the lack of respect lack of respect to anyone to your kids to your honey to anyone i should and that is why, you know, we have a ritual. Namaste. So now see that. It is a ritual. But if I continue, you all say Namaste to me. So you only say once. And I have an opportunity to say Namaste to everyone. So why shouldn't I do it? This is the ritual. So it appears as a ritual. But if you continue, you never forget it. It is going to change your mind. So we have many rituals at the physical level, at the mental level, and also at the emotional level. Now, like, you know, you simply chant Om Shanti, Om Shanti. Make it a point that every day for 15 minutes, you simply say Om Shanti, whether you know the meaning or not, make it a point. So that will become a mental or emotional ritual. Pick up anything, any, or pick up the ritual where the delusion is. That would be a great thing. What happens, find out your habit, your thought process, and then pick up the three, minimum three ritual. One ritual that I picked up is to I must take the bath. Come watch me. Physical ritual. Physical ritual. And that is what I was talking uh, last week that almost since I came to States, 
I have never missed riding on single day, whether I was in New Jersey or here. I had to do it. So what is going to happen? It acts as a reminder. Ritual acts as a reminder to get rid of the ritual. And then other rituals, like Om Shanti, you're doing mentally and emotionally. Then the second, third ritual is the, at the intellectual level. You pick up the intellectual level, means that you want to understand and repeat that understanding what is delusion. You know how I explain the delusion in 10 different ways? Because I contemplate and reflect. It's not a big deal. You can also do it. So pick up any, say pick up uh, asatoma asatagame, or false to the real. And let me, I have to contemplate and reflect uh, every day. What is this false in the real? Oh, this dear guy told me that the false is constantly changing. My mind is changing, then why I am upset over someone? Now you see. So repetition of those rituals will help you to explore the areas of the delusion and you will get out of it. <clears throat> ah, there is a very tough, tough plus beautiful women. Her husband asked me to guide her and I said, okay. Oh, no, she, he is also doing it. So, so it has been now the three months and I just picked up. Do you see that? it? You have to understand ritual in a different way. So I just pick up the mantra, Sarve Bhavantu Sukhina, let everyone be happy. So her stepdaughter, she is a mom, so her stepdaughter also lived. So in the very first session, she told me she is a bitch. I didn't say anything. I didn't say. Anything. Why should I say? Why should I attack? But then I said, I, I followed the another route. I said, do you want happiness for everyone? <laughs> so yesterday in a conversation, I said, did you talk to me in the first session? And she told me such an amazing thing that uh, in the last two weeks I have been repeating this verses whenever I wake up, whenever I go to the kitchen, whenever I look at my stepdaughter and my mind has changed. This is the power of the ritual. So don't take the ritual in a, in a very <coughs> negative way. So pick up anything. So I have an intellectual ritual. I spend about 10 to 15 minutes. I communicate with my master. Oh, what you talked. I just, you know, just in imagination. I communicate. Thank you. You introduced me the Eastern wisdom. Thank you. I'm grateful to you because you allowed me to be with you for 26 years. You never refused me. You know, that... That idea changes the mind. So our topic is, our topic that I said, the change must come from inside. So never think that these rituals is only at the outer level. If you pick up physical, mental and emotional, that was your question perhaps, Christian, yeah? So, so, so you pick up any, anything, but you must do, come what may. Whether you have a fever, so the same women, you know, last week she told me I have a killer headache. So I told to, I, I sent the message that I have a killer solution and you are not attending. You, you see the kind of uh, delusion we have. We have to get rid of these delusions. We have to hammer the mind. I told you we have to hammer the delusion so it should not cause the hypocrisy hypocrisy takes birth when we impose change from outside when we want to affect the change from outside to inside no change is ever possible in the human personality and the mind if we affect a change if we want to affect a change from outside to inside
But yes, outside we are performing a ritual. If you are continuously doing, regularly you pick up any. Not a single day has passed, you know, when I am grateful to my master. It, it, it affects you. It ultimately changes your mind. It, 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 you know, it uproots the pointed, it uproots those areas of the delusion. Now, the main uh, problem of this uh, outer change, this master hammers the outer changes. You should be very clear about the spirituality. He said, Jatilo Mundo Lunchitakesha. <clears throat> Don't get influenced if you see a guy who claims he is a spiritual or she is a spiritual person or he is a spiritual person with a long beard like me or who has a bald completely. You know, sometimes we have a different uh, uh, sects of uh, monks who there keep their bald. So he, what he is saying, and those sometimes they grow long hairs. And you see them that these long hairs, maybe in it looks that they have not combed the hair for the last 10 years. It has nothing to do with the spirituality. It has nothing to do with the awakening. This is what the master is. I should not be influenced by any garb from outside. You know, have you seen the ascetics? Ah, though I'm, st I, I, I'm standing on one foot. Why are you standing on one foot? What's the problem? When you are given the two feet. Or we, I, uh, so what, what, it is an attack on the hypocrisy. In those days also, the ascetic with a matted lock, one with the head shaven, the one with the hairs pulled out, no, sometimes there is a one sect in India where you pull out the hair. You don't uh, shave it. You pull out. So you have a lot of wounds here. And people say, you know, look at this ascetic. He is a great spiritual guy. Never be affected by him. Or yellowish brown colored robes. Such a one is fool who do who does not bring any change inside, they always try to influence people from outside. Now, what is about the modern age? Oh, I will send you the power. I will send you the energy. You already have an energy. Don't worry about it. But don't uh, go against them. Say namaste and please send me the energy. Eastern wisdom teaches you, you have to be with yourself. You have to be with your real self. It does not, yeah, sometimes it helps. It helps. So you say, but don't be influenced and dictated by any of the outer formats which claims that I am a spiritual person. This is what the master is saying. Journey, you know, we have many bumps in, on the journey of the spirituality. You have many challenges. Remember those seven factors. And the moment you remember those seven factors, you have the five remedial measures. And then you know, <coughs> it will help you clear the mind. So clear the mind. When the mind is clear, you have a clear speech and ultimately you have a clear action. That is the foundation of any spirituality, anywhere in the world. The mind, the thought, the speech and action should be harmonized. So find out if they are not in harmony. If they are not in harmony, find out the reason, cause and effect, and you will see what is the cause and effect, you will find out out of the seven factors. 
So what the master is saying, hypocrisy takes birth when the change is attempted through external means like displays of pity, rituals, costumes, uh, beard or no beard. What is most important is the self-knowledge. Knowledge about yourself. You have to be very clear. You have to go back to that I am the real self. Otherwise, you will be carried away by those rites and rituals and then <clears throat> you will have lot of problems. The meaning of this passage, you know, has now apply this passage. Do I also perform some kind of a change I always try to impose on others from the outer change instead of an inner state of the mind, and there it results into hypocrisy. I know American etiquette is that we, we hide. Even if one is crazy, we hide. Yes, we should hide if other is crazy, but I should be open if I'm crazy. I should admit. I should accept. I have nothing to do with others. I have to see the inner state of the mind should be right and good. And that inner state of the mind, when it is right and good, should be expressed in speech and action. One guy was telling me, if I feel that you are crazy, should I express you are crazy? So because you are already thinking you are crazy, so you are crazy before you claim others is crazy. So you have to change this mindset first. No one is crazy in this world. You should have respect for everyone. You know, so, so we rationalize. Don't rationalize. See the cause and effect. If I feel that you are crazy, it means I already have a corresponding emotion of craziness about you. So I should change this first. And when you rationalize, then what you say? Uh, should I say when you are crazy, you are crazy? No, you should not say it. I, I believe you understood that. Even if one, one is, okay, let them be. <coughs> you enjoy your stay. This is what the master is saying. <coughs> so we bring lot of outer changes in our life. We have no issues, you know. Wearing a particular dress on a particular occasion is also a ritual. It's also a ritual. We do it. So why don't you do it in your life also? This is what the master is saying. So that ritual outside must correspond to the inner state of the mind. Inner state of the mind first, then the speech, and then the action. You are always free from the delusion. Outward rituals or dress lack meaning without inner transformation. Pay attention to it. You have to remember this. Superficial displays for material needs betray your spiritual hypocrisy. True perception penetrates beyond the form. So when you have a right perception, it penetrates beyond the name and the form, beyond the person in front of you, beyond the relations in front of you, and it puts the mind into the state of the calmness. Seven plus five plus two. Now this is going to be the three. Seven plus five plus two. This is going to be the two. Ignorance is the main cause. <clears throat> when I try to impose and show the outer chains to 
to reflect my inner change, not a possibility. I should not do it. It will not lead you to awakening and realization at all. It will leave you with a lot of challenges. So find out. Realization one. Mind lives in wisdom. That was the one realization. Uh, you experience that. Oh, so there, now there is a sense of emotional freedom. There is an emotional freedom in my soul. What, what the emotional freedom does? It will reduce your fatigue, physical fatigue, mental fatigue. It will not allow your mind to get angry and hesitated and reactive. Well, even if you become angry and hesitated, it's okay. Then take the corrective measure. Go to the five-step remedial measures. No issue. It happens. It happens to everyone. So we need not to be hypocrites. People ask, you don't become angry. Yes, I become angry. Where is the problem? If you are constantly nagging me, I have to show my anger to get rid of you. It's a natural impulse. But can that anger is affecting me? No. I will shout in order to get the things done. And it will be just a play. Possible. So first is, realization is the emotional freedom. Why emotional freedom is required? Because it is like a dust on the mirror. It prevents you realizing the real self. Second is realization. Uh, I discussed last week how seven factors of the body makes me crazy. We discussed about it. False self, real self, and now the real self. And then the false self is the I am the body. And then the secondary self, I have all the relations. And then I continue my life with the secondary self, which does not exist at all. And the third realization, we should always remember, outer changes not required until the inner change in the mind takes place. until the inner change. So we have to pay more attention on the inner change. By thinking, by contemplating, by looking, you just remember seven plus five plus three. And then, yeah, yeah, she was telling me, and I can uh, relate to her. She was telling me when I was in the kitchen and I started repeating that mantra mentally and emotionally. And it brought a great change in my attitude towards my stepdaughter. So you did nothing to your stepdaughter. You changed your mind first. And I was so happy. It gives me a satisfaction and joy. Yeah, she was quite wise and intelligent. But in the very first session, she was saying the witch, and now she says that I feel that change. How can a 10, 12, or 15 years old girl can be <laughs> it's a, It is our relate the how I perceive the relationship. So first it starts from the mind, so I must bring the inner change, then in the speech, then in the action. Delusion is nothing but the ignorance is hiding the reality. What is ignorance is the bitch, saying the bitch, is hiding the reality. I'm just giving a practical example. It hides the reality. Like mist obscuring the sun. And then what happens? That delusion confuses the mind with a false perception. So I have a false perception about you, and then I have a false perception. It takes in the form of the speech and the action, and then I am stressed. And then I blame you because you gave me the stress. You look at the entire journey. So outer chains will not work unless we bring 
the inner changes. Not outer events, but inner ignorance causes the suffering. So I have to look into my head. Where lies the delusion? Where, how the mind is projecting? What it is projecting? So deluded mind acts blind, causing the harm to myself and to others also. In the journey of awakening and realization, it is not allowed. Awareness, self-inquiry, raise your awareness. That is what the remedial maze is. I can, uh, re I can re Let's say in a different way, all those five remedial measures, I should have a level of self-awareness. It comes from the intellect, which has a free will. Then I have to do the self-inquiry. We have already done the seven steps of self-inquiry. I have to find out, pinpoint, and then I have to see, I have to raise my level of awareness. That results into my steps of realization. You need not to think of anything, you will find that there comes an awakening taking place. Awakening taking place. Another way, notice emotional reactivity like blame or restless craving. So depending on the, when I gave a personal lesson, so obviously I fo my focus is on the, on that person. So I did not say anything to her that why you said you are, uh, your daughter is a bitch. But over the time, after a few weeks, she has changed. And then I reminded her. And she had a smile. Yes, it was my emotional reaction. I need not to say that. You recognize and realize. That's a great realization. So from where these thoughts and ideas enters, I have to bring the inner chain. Recognize these states arise from the mental ignorance caused by the delusion. Why I am falsely projecting like this? I have to hammer my mind. Hammer my mind means that I have to hammer the delusion. I have to handle this. Yes, that is so. Uh, yeah, I can also talk in a different way. Delusion, delusion. I said ignorance, confusion, having a false impression about the reality. And that is why I have been saying blaming, complaining, and reacting to others causes this. Delusion takes many shapes in the form. A repetitive selfish desire, egoistic mentality, reactions of craving and aversion, being controlled by the modes of the nature, trigunas. Now, if I say the delusion is caused by the outer event, no, it is caused by my inner ignorance. It is not caused by anything outside. I look at you, I have an imagined reaction in my mind, and then I am ready to react. This is what the emotional dependence is for. And there the intellect is paralyzed. And then I react to it. So the root of the problem lies in my hand, in my mind. All those seven factors which I have <clears throat> said again and again and again. Foolishness, scattered mind, attachment, emotional dependence, selfishness or ego, intellectual paralysis, and constant changing desires. We are not concerned, as a spiritual person, we are not concerned about that how many desires you have. But if you have a binding desire, that is the problem. What is binding desire? I expect peace and happiness from you. Binding desire. Stepdaughter, you should behave like this. 
then you are not a bitch. You see, you have to extract the meaning. You have to extract the meaning. Seven factors. And then you have to challenge the false assumption. And second step, I have given you listening and learning, consistent, contemplation and reflection, results into discernment and dispassion. Then we recognize here, oh, here is a movement from ignorance to wisdom, false to the real. And then I recognize that now I am working on my mind. So we have three steps of realization. Realization one, mind lives in wisdom. When it lives in wisdom, it is calm, relaxed, carefree. Emotional dependence is not there. Second realization, seven factors of the body. I have discussed in detail. Outer change is not required until the inner change in the mind takes place. So remember this and introduce those physical, mental, or you just sit every day for a few minutes, five minutes. You sit, you know, just think you know, intellectually, false in the real sense. Then you pick up any mantra, for example, Om Shanti, Shantyoham, Om Namo Buddhaya, whatever it is, but never forget to do it. Third, any, any physical Format. So when you pick up this and you keep on doing it for years and years, let the weeks and the months pass and you will see you have lifted your level of awareness. Now I told you that I do it with my, I communicate with the master every day. So there is no question of forgetting uh, his kindness to me. So that gives a sense of emotional freedom. Close your eyes, my friends. Check that. Now you see, eyes are closed. Place position of the body and the posture. Place position and posture of the body. Are you ready for meditation? So you are looking at your mind. Is the mind ready for meditation? Means, means what? You are not struggling at all. So this is also a ritual. When I say eyes are closed, adjust and align your body. And I've been repeating it again and again. But when we are a seeker, then it hardly takes a few seconds. The moment you listen to me and your mind says, I am. This is another ritual. So don't take a ritual as a negative thing. Understand why it is done. Sarvesham swastir bhavatu. Sarvesham swastir bhavatu. May there be happiness for all. Your mind will refuse to chant and refuse to repeat if you have a delusion. So you recognize on a given day and you force the mind to listen to it. But at present we are doing the meditation. So happiness is our essential nature. So you are looking everyone beyond their name and the form and the age and the situation and the condition. At the innermost level, we are all happiness. So we are not blessing everyone. There is a wrong interpretation. We are discovering the happiness is present as an intrinsic nature of everyone in the world. Otherwise, you know, if you are <laughs> blessing happiness, you know, Sooner or later, it will build the ego. You see that I bless you, happiness. That's why you are happy. Sarvesham shantir bhavatu. Sarvesham shantir bhavatu. Sarvesham shantir bhavatu. May there be peace for all. Same thing. That is one way to do it. And I have explained this mantra 
intellectually with the cause and effect in at least 50 different ways. I believe you, you hear those files and you collect those. That is, that is another form of a ritual. You collect the 10 form, 10 format and every day intellectually you contemplate on that. That will work. You see, in every session, I give you a tip and we do a little different practice. Sarvesham Puranam Bhavatu Sarvesham Puranam Bhavatu Sarvesham Puranam Bhavatu May there be completeness. That completeness is known as the holiness. You know, with the holy, I don't want to say any other word, but just wholeness or holiness. That wholeness is our essential nature. You know, sometimes we say His Holiness, for example, the Rai Lama, His Holiness, priest. We are also holy. We have to explore. Sarvesham, Sarvesham Mangalam Bhavatu. Sarvesham Mangalam Bhavatu, Sarvesham Mangalam Bhavatu. May there be an auspiciousness for all. Means there is a blessing, blessedness, and a grace for everyone. Why? All belongs to one existence. I believe you will pick up. One existence, because of one existence, we all exist differently with the name in the form. Like one air we breathe, one space we live. What I'm saying? One existence with many name in the form that exist in that. So we are all the children of one existence, and that existence is consciousness, that is our discovery. And now is the time to go for the breathing, looking deep inside the forehead, in the space. You are looking into the space, and there you are dropping Om Shanti, casually, with awareness, Om Shanti. So, stillness in the body, space inside the forehead, Om Shanti, and now you start breathing quick and the short breath into the ribcage. Your ribcage expands and contracts. Again, if I say, you will not agree, but I say, it is also a ritual. So, you see the impact of these practices. Just continue, continue breathing into the rib case, expansion and contraction, first point of awareness, breathing, uh, short in the quick second point of awareness, Om Shanti is the third point of awareness, the space inside the forehead and the stillness in the body. Why? By this pointed awareness, you are preventing your mind to fall into the delusion. You need to do it for a couple of weeks more, and after that, you just do it and you are there.
Just continue breathing, dropping Om Shanti in the state of the stillness in the body and recognizing the changes plus do you remember endure if the mind says no I cannot do it today and you keep on doing it. That's another way to change the mind inside. When you endure it, you are in fact changing the mind. Perhaps last time we did it for seven minutes. I don't remember whether in the last session or the one session before. And allow the breath to be normal. Check the flow of the breath in the both the nostrils. And if they are not equal, pay attention to the flow of the breath from which nostril the flow is less. Or otherwise, keep in your awareness on the flow of both the nostrils in the state of the stillness and you will discover the mind is living within. It's very easy to check and experience that state. Because if you don't check that state, we cannot come to the realization. So we are moving in a very subtle way, deeper and deeper. <clears throat> And now looking inside the forehead again, Om Shanti, stillness in the body and start breathing. Little longer breath into the belly. <laughs> Pay attention, you are inhaling into the belly that expands during inhalation and contracts during exhalation. Be very clear about inhalation and exhalation with reference to the belly. And in the state of the stillness, it's a longer breath. You endure any resistance by the mind and accept the changes if any changes takes place. It may be tingling and the numbness, freezing of the body, sense of bodylessness, calmness. Okay, 
We are experiencing the change. We accept it. So both endurance and recognition and acceptance go together. You see, you are educating the mind to move in a particular direction. <clears throat> How many of the seven factors you are taking over, you can easily understand it. Recognize and accept the changes. <clears throat> Endure if the mind picks up any of the seven factors. So you see, you are applying the remedial measures and where to go? To realize. We have three steps of realization today. We want a change inside before it manifests, before I think and speak and act. No. No. Recognize, accept the changes, Om Shanti continues, endure, if, <clears throat> if the mind says no, stillness in the body is also the endurance. <clears throat> Continue saying Om Shanti is also you are enduring. Right. 
and allow the breath to be normal. Today we have done the belly breathing for seven minutes. Look at the breath, flow of the breath. We maintain your awareness on the flow of the breath. So when you endure one, when you recognize the changes, what, what is going to happen? No one can cheat you. No cheater can cheat. No teacher can cheat you. Why? You are making a conscious journey. You know what is happening. And then you share your experiences. <clears throat> Remember this. This is very important in the journey of the Eastern Western. And I'll leave the 16 segments of fingers, no physical touch. Om Shanti and the 16 segments. I'm still helping your mind to create a sense of experience by these 16 segments. More and more sensations on these pointed fingers takes place and so that you can invoke these sensations at any point of time when you are surrounded by stress or anxiety or any of these seven factors my friend that is why we are still doing those 16 to tell you openly even during the day you should be doing it only this one 16 segments without touching the fingers physically you remember i told you mind's eye mind's touch mind's ear mind speech Om Shanti, the moment you say Om Shanti, all the senses in the mind <clears throat> is made aware of and that results into the movement of the pran. Where? At that segment of a finger. And that results into variety of experiences. A easy explanation. <clears throat> And now leave this, move the mind inside the cave of your heart, triangle, equilateral of any color, <clears throat> and you check the sinking of the mind. Moving the mind on each side of a triangle, dropping on shanti, clockwise and anti-clockwise, couple of times. <clears throat> when you find an easy, flawless movement, that is the point you recognize. You are saying, Om, pushing the mind deep inside the cave of the heart. Mind seemingly stops, seemingly. 
that is a transition point that you are transcending the mind you see that is why i'm using every time perhaps you might have noticed that i always use the word mind seemingly stops mind doesn't stop at any point of time because of the transition i experience that shanti and then we have to do nothing We are aware, one side, there is a total self-absorption, emptiness, nothingness, or variety of experiences takes over. On the other side, the mind continues to function. <clears throat> so, the absence of delusion in the mind helps us to reflect the real self there. What a beautiful session you have been. Shanti, Shanti, Shanti. Shanti 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 
Shanti, Shanti, Shanti. Bring your mind on the right hand, your mind on the left hand. Lift your Buddha palms, place it on your eyes, open the eyes inside the palms. Know your experiences, bring the hands down. We'll share your experiences. If you have any question, we'll have this question. How are you, Stephen? Good, thank you, sir. Um, I, I, I've recently had a conversation with, with different people asking me about meditation and things like that. And as you know, people just ask the question, they really don't care to have the answer. But uh, one, one, one of the things that I, I've gotten to that short elevated pitch about it is, is that the meditation teaches you how to live inside, not outside. Yeah. And, and and hearing what you're saying today is the importance of uh, of everything being from the inside out and never from the outside in, because from the outside, that's where the delusion, that's where ego, that's where desire lives. And if you start in, none of that could happen. So, um, you know, it, it, it sat really well with me. Then when I started my meditation, I observed in the beginning of my meditation, I was so focused on every word that you were saying that I wasn't thinking about anything in the past. I wasn't anticipating the next move. And it was, I was just absorbed in the moment. And then when I realized that that was happening, that's when I, the thoughts were starting to come into my head. So I was like, oh, okay, I, I, I'm, I'm getting this. And then was able to shut it all down. And actually, when you started chanting the Om Shanti, I got startled because um, I was so deep within it. it is so, so deep. again, thank you. Beautiful. You have explained so beautifully. I have nothing to say to this, except if you compare all the seven factors are basically an expression from outside to inside. So you have to contemplate and reflect and reach to a conclusion in your intellect that these seven factors are an expression in the mind which causes the delusion from outside to inside and that causes the problem. Beautiful. How are you, David and Jerry? Samir Thank you very much. Samir Bhagnani. Huh? Um. Yeah, that was a wonderful um, lesson and practice. The the endurance we have to have the endurance for the rituals, but we have to have the rituals to endure, and it's kind of a circular thing. Yeah. yeah. And um, you know, if we have the endurance for the rituals, the unfolding of getting to your true self first. So that's kind of my takeaway of the lesson. You said something interesting during the heart center uh, portion, and that was um, about you know, you can feel like your mind stops. I, at first, I thought you said heart stops, but um, <laughs> mind stop. And you know, I I realized then that my mind had stopped, but I wasn't thinking about it until you brought it up. And when I when you brought it up, I got to thinking about it, and then I just took myself, no, I can't think about it because I'm just going to let it go, and and then. I just kind of went away until you did Om Shanti. So it was wonderful. Thank you. Beautiful. Yes, yes. You endure your ritual and you just the opposite way also. So what happens if you continue with the practice? Let the practice be also, entire practice be a ritual. So if you continue doing it without faith, like uh, this woman, you know, she started saying that and I'm doing it when I'm in the kitchen. When I'm doing it, when I'm taking care of these girls, she has two or three daughters, and the fourth one is this. So, you know, it, it has a tremendous importance. So, mind seemingly stops. So, when I find the mind seemingly stops, it means it is not the mind, it is something more than the mind. So, we are touching that real self. 
That is the beauty of your conscious journey. Beautiful. Thank you. How are you, uh, Jerry? So I'm good. Thank you. Um, yeah, there was a, a complete clear awareness of the space that of nothingness. And at the same time, the mind aware yeah. of yeah. everything almost, yeah. I yeah. guess. Yeah. Um, and then the, and the meditation was very fast, equal breathing, calm, yeah. um, relaxed. Um, and then my application to, to what's going on just daily, um, always seeing that seed in everyone, even when there's a harmful, um, even when you see something, somebody being harmful in, in their behaviors, words, and actions, you still see the seed there, but you also create a boundary. Yes, you create a boundary. You allow the other to evolve. Exactly. You give us yeah. space. So that nag, like you said, nag on them or not, nothing helps. And even to point it out doesn't help. So, but the seed is there and you just, you have to create your boundaries. Though. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's beautiful. That's a beautifully said. How are you, Samir? Sometimes you just escape, so I said better to ask you. I quickly went into meditation, and uh, now it is becoming very easy to disassociate from the truth. Yeah. With the help of the knowledge. Knowledge, yes. And knowledge is helping me a lot to not to flow with the thoughts. It breaks the my it breaks me it stops me from flowing with the thought and I go into be instead of going with the thoughts. Yes, yes. And I can understand so, what you want to say. That your so mind me a lot what I'm understanding of your what I listen from you. Yeah. So that is helping me a lot to discuss from the thoughts and quickly go into meditation and peace. Beautiful. You see, what you want to say is that you, your mind does not flow with the thoughts pertaining to the seven factors, which helps your mind to withdraw inside and live inside. And in live inside, how come? Because of the knowledge. And that knowledge in the mind moves your mind from inside to outside, and that prevents the delusion. It should bring about the change in your behavior, in your speech, in your action also. Beautiful. Uh, I think I should have the noise is coming from where I am seeing. No uh, knowledge is coming from Ashok. So let me have Ashok first. Ashok <laughs> kept the. Sorry, sir. Namaste, sir. Namaste, sir. Kaise <laughs> ho? Uh, I'm good, sir. And uh, meditation was also very good. Good. So, yeah, that is. Sir, 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 Now you can you can unmute it. Yeah, that was uh -huh. making a noise. So yes, yeah, so how are you, uh, Brandy? Morning. I'm good. Um, thank you. the the less the lesson in the word. My takeaway from the lesson in the word was perception. It's kind of like what Stephen said, you know, like I can easily perceive what's going on outside of me as chaotic and dysfunctional, and it, it probably is. Yeah. But my, when I perceive my inside, it's always happy. It's always consistent. And yeah. it's, it's just a matter of where I shift my perception. You're right. You bring what is outside inside. You have a delusion. And you move from inside to outside. There is a dispassion. It's very clear. That is what, but it takes time. We have to do a lot of practices and then we reach to that state. How are you, Dennis? 
Uh, thank you. My, my takeaway from uh, today's lecture is that uh, the inner change always manifests uh, outside naturally, and it is not possible to force inner change by uh, forcibly changing attitude, behavior outside, and but it's only a path to hypocrisy and uh, yeah. no real, no real change inside. No real uh, change inside. Yeah, as, as far as uh, the meditation, it was very deep and deep absorption at the end. Yes, that is a beautiful uh, way to share. You see that what we say, oh, let us go to this meditation. It will help me. And then I move habitually. Now my mind is moving from outside to inside. I don't inquire. I don't see the cause and effect. I don't ask the question. And then what happens? It creates a kind of habit, a mechanical repetition, and that does not change. That is not going to bring any kind of awakening or realization. That has to be understood whether it is any practice of meditation. How are you, Barbara? I'm very good, thank you. Um, meditation was very, very beautiful. So um, I felt very um, at peace and alert at the very same time. Um, and the other the, the takeaway for me, amongst other things from uh, your talk today, was that it's not the circumstances that count. It's only how you react to the circumstances that count. Yes, you're right. If my mind is in delusion and I see an unfavorable circumstances outside, I react. But if the mind is clear, it is free from the delusion, even the unfavorable circumstances, I would better use the word, I endure it, and I find the right way. And that is what Jerry said, that you create a boundary. So that boundary is just a, nothing but, that is another expression. So we have done, so now we have, thank you, Barbara. So now we have Christina. Thank you. Um, I've noticed feels like a veil kind of is created by our consistent practice and the learnings and teachings between the false and the real. Yeah, yeah. So a constant, consistent listening and learning plus regular practice plus contemplation and reflection. So I did, I just talked about those three rituals, the physical, emotional, and also, also the intellectual. Sometimes what happens, you know, I just keep on looking my master and said, okay, you told me this thing, why you told me this thing? So you sometimes, it is better to get emotional with what is right. Because it creates a positive impression also. Why? Positive impression, because you want to get rid of the delusion. How are you, Terry? Um, my takeaway is more in the so, um, about the taking responsibility yeah. for my uh, endurance and my success. And my failure. Yes, yes, you're right. Uh, that, that because I think that that is what is meant by no proxy. No proxy. So thank you for tolerating <laughs> me. <laughs> Are you tolerating yeah. your maid now? Oh, well, not, not as well as I should. <laughs> I have a lot of... Uh, I will continue help. to tolerate you. You continue to tolerate your maid. <laughs> Thank you. And also the, the, the house. The house. Yeah. The, the, the body. Bar, uh, sometimes. I don't tolerate it well. So, 
what is that toleration? Yeah. It is enduring it, then rethinking, yeah. then setting your mind into order, and then uh, make it doing an action. Uh, yeah. Beautiful. No, no, there, there is no question of tolerating you. We all love you. So, how are you, Vaibhav? Uh, thank you, sir. Sir, I'm good. Mind is calm and peaceful. Mind is calm and peaceful. Beautiful. That's another way to say, how are you, Sangeeta? Where is Sangeeta? Yes. Uh, sir, what is that? So, you have to explanation this is an explanation of the text from bhaj govinda she says that she feels very calm and relaxed that is all for today thank you very much we will meet again in our next session